My wife cheated on me and gave me a hall pass to cheat on her. I used it and met an awesome woman. My wife 40F had an affair and then persuaded me 40M to sleep with someone to make amends. My marriage is improving, but I've developed emotions for my new partner 32F and have considered leaving my wife. I've been married to my wife for 12 years, but we've been together for 14. Before her affair, we had a nice marriage, even a terrific one at times. I won't claim our marriage was flawless because it wasn't, but in retrospect, I can't think of anything I did that warranted her infidelity. I confess that there were moments when I spent too much time at work or with our children and not enough time with her, which I believe is normal in most married couples at some point, but I was not a horrible husband by any means. She began an affair with a colleague in October of 2018. She'd been having an emotional affair with him for a while, but this was the first time it went physical. Their relationship lasted till May of 2019. That's when she snapped it off. In July 2019, she disclosed everything to me. She claimed she was always aware that what she was doing was wrong, but justified it to herself by convincing herself that she didn't care about our marriage anymore. When I asked her to go to therapy with me after I saw she was pulling away and we weren't connecting anymore, April 2019, and she realized that I still cared, she felt awful and broke things up. She acknowledges that she didn't intend to tell me about the affair at first, but she felt horrible about it as well and reached a point in July when she thought she was going to have a nervous breakdown if she didn't confess. When I found out about the affair, everything went downhill. I didn't leave for the sake of our children, but I needed to get away from her. We didn't converse much unless it was about the kids. There was no tenderness. I didn't want to divorce her, but I couldn't see a way out of the adultery. She began apologizing and told me she would do everything to save our marriage, even suggesting that I sleep with someone else if it would help. I eventually recognized that I couldn't continue to exist in this state of limbo. I had to decide whether to divorce her or work on our marriage. I decided to give our marriage another chance to see if anything could be salvaged, partly because she opted to be clean, which I saw as an indication that she was sincerely sorry, even though she had meant to conceal the affair from me at first. We were able to begin therapy in October 2019, but I didn't believe it was helping and informed her I felt I was wasting my time. She pleaded with me to continue coming to therapy and pushed me to sleep with someone if it would make me feel better. I thought about it more this time than the previous time she said it, and the more I thought about it, the more I felt like I wouldn't be able to go on until I slept with someone else. In retrospect, I don't believe it was a healthy attitude, but that's how I felt at the time. Around January of this year, I decided to accept her offer of a pass. When I informed my wife, her only condition was that I continued to attend therapy. In February, I met my partner. She's pretty amazing. I was just anticipating a fling with her, but it has evolved into much more. I believe we are compatible in ways that my wife and I were not. She is aware of my predicament and has been quite understanding. She just acknowledged to me that she wants more. She isn't simply interested in becoming my sex partner. She wants for us to be a couple. A part of me agrees with you. I can't deny that I fantasized about what life might be like with her. I believe we may be extremely happy together in ways that I might not be able to be happy with my wife. The prospect of a new beginning is highly tempting. However, I'm not sure whether I'm thinking clearly about this. I'm afraid I'm sliding into the trap of believing the grass. Is greener on the other side? We've only known one other for a few months. My wife has also worked really hard to preserve our marriage, and I can confidently state that we are in a much better position. For the first time since learning about the affair, I believe our marriage can be saved, and I envision a future for us both. I doubt I'll ever be completely over the affair, but I believe we can be happy again. That is my predicament. It's better for my children if I choose their mother. They may even despise me if I leave her for my boyfriend, and they discover how our relationship began. My first concern is my connection with my children. On the other side, I'm not sure what type of connection I'll be able to have with my wife. I forgive her, but I'm not sure how I won't have trust concerns in the future. It's a lot of baggage to carry about for the rest of my life, and I'm not sure I want to do that. Of all, there's no assurance that the new connection will work out, so I may be throwing away my marriage for nothing. I'm a loss on what to do. Story 2 my ex-girlfriend, Pastor Family, barely contacts me that she had a baby. We did a paternity test, just to be sure, so there's no question her kid is 100% mine. Anyway, I, 27M, just discovered this a few weeks ago. 
We only broke up because I had to go back across the country last year to support my family when my father died of cancer. I didn't want to drive the lengthy trip since I was going to be working there for a while. She never said anything to me. Her mother claims she didn't want me to worry about her all the way over there when my father's family needed me more, and she promised to notify me as soon as I returned. I returned about a month ago, and now I'm learning that not only did I lose her, they stated there were issues when she gave delivery, but we also have a newborn boy. I'm feeling a combination of emotions, and the worst thing is that I can't speak to her about it because I wish she told me. Her mother claims that they are barely coping with him. They need assistance with him, which is why she contacted me once they discovered I had returned. Of course, he's mine, and I'm responsible for him. Even so, it's difficult not to worry. I'm still reeling from her passing. Now that I have a youngster to look after, I have a lot on my plate. I didn't even get to be a part of his first two months of existence. My family is unaware of his existence. I haven't even seen him yet, and her mother has just emailed me photos. He's stunning. I'm not sure how I'm going to pull this off. For some reason, I'm terrified, sad, and irritated. I'm terrified about meeting him and how this will turn out. Her parents will be there to assist, but I know they'll be with me the most of the time. Any suggestions would be much appreciated. From new parents, or, to be honest, anybody. What am I going to do about all of these new changes? Update. All of the information and advice you provided in my initiative article meant a lot to me, so thank you. Some of you asked for an update. What can I say? It's been a whirlwind. When I finally saw my kid, it felt like a truckload of emotions slammed me all at once. I hadn't expected it. My ex's mother had to take him away for a moment because I was weeping uncontrollably. It wasn't because I didn't want to be his father. It's one of those times when everything comes crashing down on you and the only thing you can do is weep. She got it, however, and sobbed with me. She's a lovely person. Because she is so compassionate, she treats everyone as though they are her children. My kid has my ex's nose as well as her eye shape. That's what struck me the most. We broke up for the time being when I was at my father's, but that didn't mean I wasn't still in love with her. And now we have a kid together, but she won't be able to have that family experience with us, and I miss her so terribly. I needed to hold my kid and introduce myself to him. Me and her mother discussed custody. We've already hired a lawyer to help the process go more smoothly, so we're all on the same page. They let me remain. We chatted about my ex, and I had a few drinks with her father. I remained at their place for a few days since I was frightened of being alone with my kid because I had no idea what to do with him. They were both very nice and patient in instructing me how to change his diapers, feed him, bathe him, rock him to sleep, and put the damn car seat in my vehicle without tossing it on the floor. Her parents were kind enough to let me stay the night, so every time he awoke, I'd be there, either watching her do everything or doing it myself. He's been at my house for about two weeks. I brought almost all of his belongings with me. We're looking for a two-bedroom apartment, but for the time being, he's sleeping in my room in his bassinet. It's been quite difficult. I probably phoned her mom five times in two hours the first night because he wouldn't stop wailing. Then I'll take him to his doctor since I'm worried something is wrong with him. My weak point was calming him down when he became agitated. Nothing I attempted worked. Walking around my flat and rocking him continually seemed to help a lot. It's still not easy, but I'm feeling more sure that I can manage the tears without freaking out and calling for assistance. I'm taking time off from work to be with him full time. I'm exhausted, anxious, and have a lot going on emotionally. But I'm also content when I'm holding him or making him laugh. I honestly adore him more because of the tiny things he does, including his sweet little sneezes. He seemed to be becoming fond of me as well. My mother has been over to visit him, and almost everyone in my family has met him on Zoom. She's offered to babysit once I return to work in a few months, so that's one less thing to worry about. I only wish my father had the opportunity to meet him. I'm sure they would have been great friends, and he would have spoiled my kid rotten. And it's as though my ex was aware of this as well. I didn't realize this until her parents handed me his birth certificate, but my ex wanted his middle name to be my father's, which was a pleasant surprise that he has his grandfather's name as well. I'm gradually adapting to my new existence. It's not easy, but he makes it worthwhile. I want to be his father and give him the best I can, just as my father did for me.